When you're interested in installing a planetarium software on your PC or Mac, you can either go with Stellarium, which is widely popular and actually free, or you could go with Starry Night 8, which in its Pro Plus version cost you a nice $260. So why would you spend so much money if you can have something for free? I want to show you 10 features which are quite unique in Starry Night 8. And at the end of the video I will give you a recommendation who should actually consider buying Starry Night 8 and who should stick with Stellarium. Come and join me on this journey. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland, so grüezi miteinander and thank you for watching my channel. You heard me saying in the introduction that Starry Night 8 costs $260. And you might say, no, 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 Sascha, you actually can get Starry Night 8 for only $60. And that's correct. The issue with it is that how they did stuck the features in the different version makes the lower priced version absolutely unattractive. You can go with Stellarium when you have exactly the same things. The really cool stuff you only get in the Pro and a lot of it only in the Pro Plus version. So from my perspective, it's an all or nothing. Either you're interested, you're the type for these special features, and then you should go with the Pro Plus version, which is $260, or you rather go with another software. But without further ado, let's dive into space and start with feature number one. The first thing I would like to show you is the amazing graphics of Starry Nights. And for me, this is really one of the selling points, but this also really needs the Pro Plus version to really shine. From my point of view, this looks absolutely stunning. The Milky Way and all the stars that you can see. And let's zoom in now in this beauty. And you see the richness and the color of the stars shining. And what it makes so beautiful is they actually did an all sky CCD mosaic. So this is a picture. These are not drawn stars. To show you the difference, I will now shut this all sky image off and immediately it goes back to a rather dull image, which you would also see with any other planetarium software. It's just not the same. If I turn it back on again, it's just amazing. Now to be clear, you don't need that to simply plan your evening. This is not a must have but it's what makes it a pleasure to look at and to work with it. Now the same goes with the moon and the planets. Here you have some high resolution screen surfaces, which also only get with the Pro Plus version. If I now zoom into the moon, no matter how much I zoom in, the picture just stays sharp. And again, these are real photos taken of the moon. It will tell me each and every crater, how they're called. I can also mark them to make, for example, a photo to illustrate something very easy. I will go now to some observing list, to Night's Best, for example, M101. You also see it not just jumps there, it really moves over, which looks really nice. and we can look at the galaxy in all its beauty. So the next feature I want to show you are the sky surveys. These are six different overlays which show you space in a different spectrum. And the first one I want to activate, I go over here, sky survey, is the near infrared light. So if I turn it on, you see immediately how the Milky Way lights up. Again, this looks really, really stunning, I think. So let's now do something meaningful with it. So what are we going to do? We're going to go to Orion. Now let's magnify it. And actually I want to go up here and look at this part. So that, that's how the picture looks without the sky survey on. Now let's put on again the near infrared light. Turn it off, turn it on. There's certain stars which radiate a lot of near infrared light and others who don't. These who do are actually the ones who affect this nebula and make it glow. 
Let's now change to the second sky survey, which goes to the far infrared light. And you see that this whole area is extremely lit up. So it's full of this far infrared light. We have also other overlays like the cosmic microwave background. So the oldest light in the universe. And we also have the cosmic mass distribution, which shows actually the distribution of mass between Earth and the edge of the universe. So as you can see, this is highly scientific. But if you're interested in astronomy, it really gives you the possibility to have a sound understanding of our universe. With that, let's get to something lighter. <laughs> and that is Sky Guide. You can think about Sky Guide as a tour guide through the universe. And it doesn't matter if you want something easy, for example, to watch together with your kids, or if you want to know what at the moment are the greatest objects to look at at the sky tonight. Both of that is possible and a lot more. You want to know something about Mars? Just book a tour. We started. Just also always gives you some text here. And then it does some illustrations. So you can see Mars here in the context of the surrounding planets. And then here you have a close up. It shows you the moons. And the cool part is this is all not a movie. But I can go over here now and interact with it. Zoom in, zoom out, whatever I want. And again, you see, even if I zoom in, it's sharp. There's a lot of other tours. So what I, for example, like is the sky calendar. So I go in here, tune, and it tells me for each day what would be interesting. So for example, today, it tells me about the morning planet Bonanza. If I want to look at that, view, and it shows it nicely to me. Now, the next feature I want to show you is a little bit more scientific again. It's the Hirschsprung-Russell diagram. So what does it show me? In principle, the Hirschsprung-Russell model tells you something about the star's age and its mass. It has on its vertical axis the energy the light it emits, and on the horizontal axis the temperature of the star. From that point of view, the younger stars are in the main sequence here. The higher up they are, the larger they are. The old red giants you find over here and some white dwarfs you would have down here. So how can we apply that now? For example, you're interested what kind of star Arcturus is. So you just hover over the star and look what happens. You see now this red dot in the diagram. So Arcturus is actually a red giant. Let's go to Andaris. Even more extreme. It's one of the largest stars we actually have at the moment on our screen. With that, let's go to our next topic, and that's graphing. Let's say we're interested in Arcturus. We want to know when does it rise, when does it set. So if I activate the graphs, per default, I have the sun and the moon, which you can already see. And you see how the sun and the moon are going up and down again. So now what I can do, I can go to Arcturus, and I just say, start graphing. And now I have a third graph here, which is Arcturus. And so I can see it in relation to the sun and the moon, and I know when it will have its highest points. Which might be interesting, for example, for astrophotography, that I know by an object from when to when it will actually be so far up the horizon that I can actually shoot it. I can now do the same with Antares, and you see it goes not much over the horizon, so Arcturus seems to be much the better candidate. I can do this with as many objects as I want. Obviously, it gets a little bit hard to read if I would choose too many. The next feature is field of view. Obviously, I need to know when I want to shoot an object, will it actually fit in the field of view of my telescope? So I can actually enter all my telescope data and my cameras, and then I can look at the field of view. So for example, I'm interested in M6, so I'll open it and I can look at it. My CPC 800 without reducer, my CPC 800 with reducer, and here I would have a red cat 71 in comparison. I can also grab them and turn them around. And when we're already talking about observing, I can actually create observation lists. For example, here Messier Marathon. I open it up and it gives me all the messy objects. And I can just say select all. And now I have them all labeled. Or I can just double click on one and it will slew right to it. And here we are. If I want to go closer, I say magnify.
and you will move me right to it. Now there's something else I want to mention here. As you might know, Starry Night is created by the same producer as Sky Safari. And these two software have something in common, and that's LifeSky. What it is actually is a cloud instance which syncs data. So if I create observation lists here in Starry Night, they're automatically also available in, on my iPad or iPhone on my um, Sky Safari instance. The same is also with my equipment. So the field of view that, I've, that you've seen, I have that immediately available too if I enter the equipment here or the opposite around. So that's really nice. Sky Safari, by the way, is really my go-to software when I'm out in the field. So just to look up in the sky, search for some objects, some stars to align and so on. Now the next thing I want to show you is really spectacular. It's about perspective, about space travel. So we're used in the planetarium software to actually look from Earth to space. But did you ever think how it would be to travel to the moon and to look back from the moon to Earth? We can easily do that here, not just with the moon, with any planet, with any stars, but let's do it with the moon. So we can simply click on the moon and say, go there. And as you can see, we start moving, leaving Earth, And here we are, close to the moon. Let's stay on the right side and say that that's a great crater. Let's say, go to the surface. And we go and land exactly where we want it to be. And here we are right on the moon and again with the very beautiful sky i don't know i i just think it's awesome so here is uranus venus mars jupiter neptune oh we what we have here earth so now we can actually zoom in on earth again magnify And now we can look at Earth from Moon. Isn't that amazing? Now having just had this great experience, something more administrative again. If you look at my screen, you see a lot of labels. For example, here Vega in purple. You see here this deep space objects in yellow. And you realize that when I go through always where I am, the constellation that is right in the center is actually marked. The others are not. Also here, the meridian line. All of that is customized. This is exactly how I want it to be. The color coding, this font size, how many objects per group I want to see, the way I want to see the constellations, and so on. You can, do, you can customize everything exactly like you want it to be, and it's very easy to change it. So just to give you one example, if I want to have more or less comets, I go over here in the search bar, I double click on the comets and I can change it. I can change it if they should be brighter or dimmer, the comet tails. I can change the font size. I can change the font, the color and so on. So I have full control over every little element of this screen. And I think that's amazing. I have also possibility to choose the light pollution. I can switch on local light pollution and you see suddenly the Milky Way almost disappears. There's not so many stars visible anymore. If I shut it off again, the Milky Way appears again. I can have distant light pollutions of certain cities. I have this activated depending on, on my location. So there's a wealth of possibilities that you can customize this exactly like you want it to have. Okay. These were the 10 features I wanted to show you. And even this all looks really great, at least from my perspective. I read a lot of negative reviews about Starry Night 8 
in some forums like Cloudy Night. Why? Personally, I believe that Starry Night 8 is misunderstood. It really depends on how you define your interest in astronomy and astrophotography, if Starry Night 8 is for you or not. If you're curious about astronomy, if you want to know more about the history, the scientific facts of the objects you're shooting, if you really want before or after shoot, dive into space, look at the region where this object is located and understand all the effects, all the scientific background, all the characteristics of these objects, then I think Starry Night 8 is a wonderful application and it's absolutely worth the price. But if for you the primary focus is the photography and you want to get the most beautiful shots and your main ask from the software is which objects to shoot in which sequence tonight, then I believe Stellarium or Sky Safari on an app is a much better solution to you. Please leave a comment below and tell me what your opinion is about Starry Night 8 and what planetarium software you are using personally. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more coming. See you next time and clear skies. Thank you.